In 1845, a Scottish physician named John Bennett carried out an autopsy on a 28-year-old man who had died suddenly. He noticed that the man's spleen and liver were greatly enlarged, while his veins were clogged with white infection-fighting cells. In previous cases like this, doctors had taken this pus-like substance as a sign of infection. But Bennett diagnosed a disorder of the blood itself, a malfunction from within the body rather than an attack from without. Just five weeks later, a doctor in Germany named Rudolf Virchow published a similar case report. Virchow described an imbalance in his patient's blood. Healthy blood is composed of mostly red blood cells and plasma, with just 1% white blood cells. But the majority of this patient's blood was white. Virchow called the disease leukaemia, from the Greek word leukos, or white, and hyma, or blood. About 350,000 people worldwide are diagnosed with leukaemia, or cancer of the blood, each year. Cancer occurs when genetic mutations cause abnormal cells to divide and multiply in an uncontrolled way. But unlike most cancers, leukemic cells don't belong to an organ, like the lungs or stomach, and don't result in the growth of a tumour. Instead, the uncontrolled cell growth takes place in the bone marrow. The marrow is the body's blood factory, where a single type of multipotent stem cell divides and matures to give rise to 12 different kinds of blood cell. Leukaemia can occur at different stages of this process and in virtually every type of blood cell. In all cases, the abnormal cells build up and fill the bone marrow, ultimately preventing other cells from developing. The cancerous cells can also spread to other organs in the body. The rate at which leukaemia progresses and the course of treatment differ depending on the type of cells affected. When a normal stem cell divides, it produces one of two slightly more specific cells, called myeloid and lymphoid stem cells. These give rise to several other cell types. Each myeloid cell eventually becomes a red blood cell, a platelet, or an infection-fighting macrophage. When cancer occurs in these cells, it's known as myeloid leukaemia. Lymphoid cells develop into T, B and natural killer cells. Cancer occurring in these cells is called lymphoid leukaemia. When cancerous mutations show up in a myeloid or lymphoid cell that is still developing, abnormal cells quickly fill the marrow and interfere with normal function. This form of the disease is known as acute leukaemia because it progresses so rapidly. As cancerous cells proliferate, the rate of normal blood cell production plunges. Chronic forms of leukaemia occur in more mature lymphoid or myeloid cells. The irregular cells build up in the bone marrow over a period of years, interrupting the production of normal blood cells and spreading to other parts of the body. These categories, acute and chronic, lymphoid and myeloid, are used to assign cases of leukaemia to one of four subtypes. Acute lymphoid leukaemia, chronic lymphoid leukaemia, acute myeloid leukaemia, and chronic myeloid leukaemia. Acute lymphoid leukaemia, or ALL, primarily occurs in young children between the ages of 1 and 4. The other three types most often strike later in life, particularly after the age of 70. When Rudolf Virchow gave leukaemia its name, no successful therapies existed and the disease was nearly always fatal. But prognosis has vastly improved since then, thanks to the development of chemotherapy and other treatments such as bone marrow transplants. Within the past few decades, a person's chance of surviving for five years after diagnosis has risen by an average of about 20%. For people with chronic myeloid leukaemia, CML, survival rates have climbed even more by about 30%, thanks to the development of the first targeted cancer therapy. Now researchers are working to understand the genetic underpinnings of other forms of leukaemia and to decipher the molecular secrets of leukaemic stem cells.
Lessons learned from these and other research efforts hold promise for the development of new, more effective weapons for combating leukaemia and may also provide key insights in the broader war against cancer in all its forms.